everyone. Welcome everyone to Making Love Visible. My name is June Dillinger and I'm your host today. And I'm so glad that you have rejoined me again, whether you are listening with your ears on a podcast or looking with your eyes on our video vlog today. I have the most amazing guest. Hmm. Her name is Dr. Lulu. And I met her on Clubhouse. And what I love so much about her was that Everything about her is alive. It's mm. full on energy. It's vibrant. And I thought, who is this lady, Dr. Lulu? Besides, I live in Honolulu. And um, I was drawn to her name. And my very first doll's name was Lulu mm. when I was growing up. But what I learned about her is she is a, what I'll call, was the, the traditional word is pediatrician, but she's a momatrician. Yes. And she cares for the LGBTQIA and children of the world. And so let me introduce you, Dr. Lulu, take it away. All right, so a couple of truths, I guess two truths and a lie, right? <laughs> so the two truths I are, I am a pediatrician and I do go by the phrase, the momatrician. So those are two truths. The lie is I don't take care of the kids. I take, I coach their parents. So it's a little bit different. I'm a pediatrician, so I, as a pediatrician, I take care of all God's children up until the age of 21. As a coach, I coach parents specifically of LGBTQ plus kids. And I, and I also coach TEDx speakers and book writing and all that, but, but specifically my brand new niche. And I also coach physicians, suicidal physicians, overwhelmed physicians, believe it or not. I coach who I am. And so I'm a mother of an LGBTQ plus kid, uh, my, my, my son or young adult child, <laughs> which is where they were like, mom, what is a young adult child? I said, that, that's what you are, you're 23, you're a young adult child. You're always gonna be my child and you're a young adult. So I, I coach them because I'm a mother of a young adult, non-binary child, person, human. I'm also a physician who has struggled with suicidal ideation in my past. And then I happen to be, as a pediatrician, I take care of children and the age window is zero or birth to 21 or 23, depending on what state you're in. So those are the people that I take care of. And that's kind of how I came up with the, the phrase, the momatrician was because I figured what's the best way to put mom and pediatrician together. And so once I put those two together, I went ahead and quickly had it trademarked so nobody can borrow it or steal it because it's all mine, baby. So that's kind of how that, that cookie <laughs> crumbled. So yeah. So how did this practice or where did the drive to become a pediatrician begin in your life? Well, I, I didn't really want to be a pediatrician. I wanted to be an architect and I still want to be an architect. That's crazy, but it's true. My, my original conversation when I had the talk with my father I was like, I want to be an architect. My dad was like, yeah, I don't know about that. I was like, why? And he was like, well, you know, you're a girl. I'm like, what? what has that got to do with anything? I love designing buildings and old buildings and art and creativity. I was like, I know, darling, I know. But what about something in the medical field like pharmacy, like your cousin? I was like, medical field, pharmacy, schmarmacy. If I'm going to go to medical school, I'll go, I, I'm going to become a doctor. So my dad was like, um, I mean, I want something feminine, like a girl. I'm like, what the is that? You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go to medical school if that's the last thing I do, you know? Because basically what my dad tried to tell me, which was what any parent would do is steer me away from architecture because in his own limited mind, which is, which is what we all have limited mind when it comes to somebody else's dream. I can never inject myself into your dream enough to dream your dream. Now I can help you see further. I can lift you up on my shoulder so you can see a little bit higher and further, right? But you do the seeing. And that's what my father tried to do, try to lift me up on the shoulder so I could see. But then what I saw was past pharmacy, past architecture since he was trying to tell me that in Nigeria we, we you know Nigeria was kind of a country which is not architecturally moving forward which makes sense because I didn't see that but he saw that as an as an adult and he was like architecture wise no I don't want you to do something and then be stuck unhappy but medicine 
Now there is a, there's a good dream. Now why not pharmacy? But you see the beautiful thing about a child is you give me the baton and then I have to run my race and my lane. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'll take the baton, but I'm going in that direction. And that's what, that's what happened. So I was like, I'll take the baton, I'll bite, I'll bite medicine, but I'm not going to pharmacy. I'm going to human medicine. And then once I said that, once I said the words out, I started kind of testing it and I was like, that's not so bad. And then everyone's like, oh, you're going to be a pediatrician. It's easy because you love kids. And so it was also the power of suggestion. When I get in a, in a bus, when I get in a train, when I get on a plane, if I see that little baby, I'm all over the baby. And so everyone's like, yeah, you know, you, you, you have to be a, you have to become a, a, a natural, a natural. So I, wanted to become, I wanted to become a urologist, which is crazy. I wanted to become a urologist because I had a crush on my urology professor. <laughs> Sorry, you know, like me, I don't care. Um, you are influenced, and you are, you are influenced, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? By who you are influenced by. We we'll stick with influence. That's not the word, but it's close enough. And so, inspired is what I was thinking about. You are inspired by who you are inspired by. You you don't get to pick what inspires me. If I go to the woods is usually to look at the trees that have no leaves. If I go to the woods with you on a hike, you might go to listen to the birds. But we're all, we're both on the, on the hike in the woods. Mm -hmm. And so I'm inspired by trees that have no leaves. When I used to, when I used to travel a lot with my boys, we would pull over so I could use my Nikon D60 to photograph trees that had no leaves. And they're like, mom, why? I said, there's just something fascinating about the fact that this one was struck by lightning or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the stories behind the trees. So I, I was inspired by my, my urology professor because I had a crush on him. Now, I didn't really care much about urology. I didn't think, what is urology? And you know, I mean, but I like this teacher. <laughs> and so ultimately, sometimes to in, in African proverb, that there's an Afri African proverb that says it takes a village to to raise a child. And so it was good that all, all those people suggesting to me, my subconscious kind of said, you know what? Maybe we should give it a try. And I love pediatrics. And I just like, you know what? I'm, I, this is, I think this is home for me. So it's one of those things where if you have a destiny, you can kick and scream and fight all you want. If you allow yourself to just lean in a little bit, it, it would just, the universe would just like, just blossom into this huge thing. And I can't believe I'm coming up literally on 30 years as a physician in July of this year. So I'm actually, I'm going to hang up my stethoscope, which is like, oh my God. 30 <laughs> so, years. And so a great one. Great one. from Nigeria, you had the whole world to choose from. Why America? Why the United States? I mean, why not? I think uh, people that people ask me that I'm like, why not? I mean, if you want to go to Zimbabwe, you can go to Zimbabwe. I think it's not so much in the location as in the fact that I dare to dream. I just dare to dream of a different place, a better place, and maybe, maybe it's America. For me, I while I was a resident, while I was a very young, impressionable house officer, which is a, an intern, I had two attendings that both went to Howard. Again, I'm one of those people that are very, very, I guess maybe intuitive is the word, I don't know, but I do allow myself to be inspired easily. I, I, I don't care if it's a baby, I want to be inspired by them. And so those two people, those two women, which is good, both from my tribe, which is another good, both went to Howard. Now, I don't know anything else I learned during my internship here, but I learned these two women that happened to have both gone to Howard were the best clinicians that I could uh, that were around me. Their clinical methods were top notch. They were, they knew how to communicate with the kids. They knew how to listen, how to talk to the parents, and and the kids got better. And for me, it didn't matter about anything else. I was like, what a coincidence. Where's Howard? 
<laughs> Where's Howard? Right. Where is Washington, D.C.? Oh, he's in the U.S. Okay, I'm going there. And it was as simple as, again, the power of laws of attraction and power of suggestion and the power of saying to myself, I can. And so I say that on the car, I was say, because I can. So I said, like, you know, I'm going to Howard. They were like, what are you talking about, Willis? I said, I'm going to Howard. They're like, okay. I was like, okay. So my dad was like, you want to go to America? What? You're not married. You're this, you're that. I was like, daddy, listen, America is where it is. You have to meet these people that went to Howard. They know what they're talking about. My dad was like, where's Howard? Just like me, I was like, in Washington. <laughs> and then right away, my dad was like, well, I have a friend in Washington, D.C. But you see, that's, that's why parents should never, and I'm, and I'm hoping I'm one quarter a parent that I think I can be, never squash their kids' dreams. My dad wasn't like, oh, you're not going. He was like, well, I know a friend in, I know a friend in D.C. I was like, call him, call him. And he calls his friends and says, my little daughter wants to be, um, wants to come to D.C. And, he, and the guy was like, let her come. And it's important to when you lean in to your greater purpose, the doors will just literally just, just wide open. The guy was like, let her come. And then he hit me. Oh, that means I'm going to have to leave home. I won't be at home again. You know, I was like, but then the, the, this, this pool to Howard was so powerful that I actually envisioned myself walking up and down the hallways and I would hear them paging Dr. Ume, paging Dr. Ume in my head. And now I've come full circle with the I am affirmations and I realize literally if you can dream it, if you can believe it, you can be it. Like it's yours. And so I saw myself in the hallways. I, I smelt the hallways. I saw myself in my white coat. I didn't see anything else, but I saw myself inside of Howard University. Never been to America before, never been to DC before, nothing. But I saw myself there. And then I asked myself, okay, what do I need to do to get there? Okay, you have to take exams. Okay, where do you take the exams? You have to go to Ghana. Great, we're going to Ghana. And so I didn't see any obstacle. And I think that's why I love who I am and who I've become. Just like, I see this thing though, but I see it. How and as I, a, yes, yeah, as a, as a momatrician, pediatrician, the value that you provide to your, your parents because of your vision is so alive that, it, like you said, with your dad, he lifted you up on his shoulders to set you free and believe in you so that you could have your dream and you were do, doing the same thing by living that truth of aliveness of you for all of these parents, especially with children that have, um, this is the other thing that drew me to you is that you're working with children from the non-binary community and you're expanding a possibility of dreams and what's possible for them. I think, I think, the, I think, and, and I like that. I like that synopsis. I think for me, the, the thing is I work, my ultimate platform is youth suicide prevention. I'm just getting there through the parents of LGBTQ plus kids. It's not so much non-binary. My son is non-binary. That's true. I had a seven-year-old who tried to hang himself twice a couple of years ago. That caused me to stop in my tracks and ask, what the heck? Why would you want to do that? Now that's in the premise of having lost a 15 year old to suicide in 2008 and having lost a colleague of mine, another female physician, Nigerian to suicide in 2000. And in 2018, this little kiddo wants to kill himself. And so at one point I had to ask myself the questions. Are you, ask the universe, are you trying to tell me something? I didn't need to have lost more than one patient to suicide. I only needed the one. And I needed to lose just one colleague that I knew to suicide. Now, I've, now I know more people that have killed themselves that have physicians, but I needed only one patient because that's one too many. And so once I started looking into it and looking it up, I was like, oh my God, 
this is like an, it's a pandemic. Everybody wants to kill themselves. Why? And then I started narrowing it down and narrowing it down and narrowing it down. And then I came to the diamond in the raw, which was LGBTQ kids, particularly trans kids because of parental rejection. So I'm like, hmm, I happen to have an LGBTQ plus kid who was raised in a house that was full of love. But even I had struggled when my son said they were non-binary a few months ago. I'm like, what the heck is that? And so I started piecing it together. I've spoken at the United Nations. I've spoken at TEDx. I've testified at the the Texas State House. I have another TEDx talk coming up. But it's still, the theme is childhood trauma and what you and I can do to prevent the trauma because traumatized kids grow up to become traumatized adults and suicide is very high amongst people who have trauma that is not dealt with. So the window there is hurt people who don't get healed hurt others. Most people say hurt people hurt people. That's not true because you are hurt. If you handle your hurt, if you heal your hurt, if you get heard of your hurt, all the H's, you won't hurt another person. But that's the problem. And so in the meantime, we have parents over here making it all about them. Oh, I can't believe you're gay. Oh my God, that's against my morals. Oh goodness, what would the church say? Or my friends say? What would I say? Fear, fear, fear. That's how you spell all those, all those excuses. And so I'm like, do you realize that if you really truly love your child, you will be like my dad. You might make a suggestion, but if your child says, let me have the baton, I'm gonna run my own race. I'll see you at the finish line. Your job is to give me the baton and go wait with flowers and a towel and bells. So in, in, the, in the space of what you've created from start to, um, I feel like you're just barely beginning your own race as you come into this, this new um, mm-hmm. diversity of adding a professional coaching to an advisory career. Let's see your t-shirt. What have you got on there? It says chucks and pearls, baby. Booyah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a bison. I went to Howard. H U, you know. Go Pamela <laughs> Harris. That's right. That's right. Go Pamela Harris. I'm so happy about that. So in your in your practice in um, Texas, do you actually spend office hours or are you out and about more often in the community? But what is your drive right now? What is your main focus? Youth suicide prevention is always going to be my focus. It's never changed. It's never changed. Just because um, the way to look at it is if you want to build a six-story building and you can see and you know that you, you want to build a six-story building, you can't build it without a foundation, without the foundation. In fact, you can't even build it without the architectural drawing. Like you bring in some architecture there. So my foundation is the, the, the rock. The reason why kids jump, and I like to use that description. The reason why kids jump to suicide, to self-hurt, to anorexia, to whatever, self-destructive behavior, is parental betrayal. Like, I don't care who's, who doesn't believe me, it doesn't change it. Parental rejection, whether it's a child who was molested as a child, like I was sexually molested, whether it's a child who is gay, whether it's a child who is being bullied, whether it's a child who just wants to become a doctor, whether their father wants to become a, an architect, whatever it is, if that child doesn't get that primary cheerleading factor that the parents should have, i.e. affirmation, love, care, support, validation, visibility, your parents just seeing you as you are, 
with all the potentials that you have and setting you forth. The best way to describe the parent-child relationship for me is the parent is the person holding the kite, the strings of the kite. The child is the kite. You don't get to fully control a good kite. Well, what you can do is you can set them off in the air and the wind will blow them where they may and they will soar and glide and all that. And when you see them going towards electrical poles or trees, what you do is you do a slight nudge, right? And move the direction a bit. But you ultimately do not fly. But parents don't realize the power that they have. They don't know the one-fifth of the power they have. You are the first teacher. You are the first person the child sees, like literally, but, but, but imaginatively and, in, and physically speaking, when the child can see, the first person that they see is you. The person the child imprints on is you. When you talk about little birds and little chickens and little puppies, they imprint on their owners. And then everything the owner says is like, I'll do it. Imagine a child, they imprint on you. And so you have such a powerful influence on them if you only knew. But your power is not the same thing as control. They're two different things. As a matter of fact, the more powerful people are those who allow you to just be. If there really is a God, if there really truly is a God, then he or she is the quintessential person in power because he lets you be. You can do right or you can do wrong. He will leave you. She will leave you. They will leave you. That's power right there. Control is actually negative. Sadly, I am also guilty of it. All parents are guilty of it. We think that's my child, I should control, that's just me. I'll give you a story. My, my youngest son, this one, turned 16 in October. This is my non-binary one, by the way. This is my middleman child. So my <laughs> last child, my LMC, like I like to call him, my LMC turned 16 in October. And all he wanted for his birthday was to build a computer, a PC. His other mom and I, with our limited imagination and our limited visibility, because we're down here, we're holding him on our shoulders, he can see. And he said, I want to build a, a PC. We were like, a PC? Really? <laughs> but I was like, what do you need for that? He was like, okay, I need to buy the motherboard. I need to buy this, that. I said, okay, have at it. With my limited belief, I didn't think he could. But as a 16-year-old vibrant thing, he was like, I can do it. And then next day he said his friend, whatever, Michelle, whoever is coming, I said, make sure y'all wear your masks. Because this was in October. That's all I cared about. And then I come in and I'm like, mm, okay. Today, October to March, that's the PC he uses for his online schooling. Runs smoothly. I am so proud of him. And he has this beautiful um, box for the, whatever, the hard drive. It's, it's, a, it's a glass. It's so you can see the inner workings of it. It's so cool. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if I had said, you, what do you mean you want to be living? No, you, no, you, no, you, no, you don't. No, you can't. What I'll do is effectively stunt him and he won't build a computer. And I will remain in my limited visibility and think, oh, I'm a good parent, but I'm stunting my child. That reminds me when I, I have one son, he's 29. And as a young parent, I heard somebody say something about when they spill the milk, just clean it up. Don't, be, don't scold them because children spill the milk. And but, wait, so, but, you know, but even more importantly than that, children do not purposely. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I'm, I would say, let's get it cleaned up. Oh, let's pour another glass. Like 
it it happens it's called life happens and that 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 space allowed so much more creativity for him as a child uh, there were some safety boundaries that i would come across over the years but um overall he is extraordinarily balanced and sometimes i i feel like it's because of the spilled milk story that i once heard don't ever scold your child for spilling milk or get it tracking mud into the house it's called life it's what we do and it's I, how I, feel I keep going back to so he spilled the milk that's the action or oh, that's the result that's the result of the action what was the intent? He was just picking up the glass. Exactly. Yeah. The intent, exactly. The intent was to not spill the milk. Do you think he feels bad already by first? Yes. Do you think you're helping by saying, oh my God, I can't believe you spilled the milk. Oh my goodness. That's however, however, that's what we do. We it's so people. small. Yes. Yeah, so small and so big. And I see it all over the place. And I sometimes wonder, I'm like, where do where do parents get the idea that besides that, that's probably the way they were raised, but where do they get the idea that this is okay? Are they even conscious? Are they are they just completely unconscious about how they're choosing to raise their children? So this brings me to my next point, Dr. Lulu. Social media. Your Instagram page is freaking alive. I watch you like dancing and sharing and speaking and, and your vibrancy is uh, quite honestly, it's addictive. It just mm -hmm. really is. If there wasn't anything that isn't good, then this is a good thing to be addicted to is to you and your message. And so how, how can we share your greatness the best? What is the best way that the audience, whether they're listening or watching, because I'll tag everything I need to in, in the posts, but could you just share all of the best ways to follow, be in touch and get to know you better and, and, and learn from what you have to offer? Your books, your talks, everything. I wanna hear it all. Oh my goodness. The first question is how much time do you have? But I thank <laughs> you, I thank you for the opportunity. I am relatively, brand new on Instagram. I'm literally a month old on Instagram. I say that because I've been on Instagram for about, I don't know, maybe three or four years. I don't know. In three or four years, I had 330 followers up until February 18th, about a month, maybe five weeks ago. And then I discovered Clubhouse. I'm not going to lie. Hey, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. No, no, but not only that, about a month ago was also when I said, you know what? This is what I'm going to niche. This is my brand new niche because I have 11 clients who are not parents of LGBTQ plus kids, who are physicians, book writer, book writers, speaking clients, different things. But I just decided, you know what? I'm going to hire a coach and I'm going to niche out. And I'm niching out into the most unpopular, one of the most unpopular niches. No one wants to talk about LGBT. What? But when you have a child and when you love your child and you recognize that your child is a gift for a finite time and your job as a parent is to nurture the heck out of them and then send them on their merry way, you would do things that you surprise yourself. <laughs> I'm like, what? But also you will lean in with curiosity and say, you know what? I don't know. So let me ask the source. And so my son has been my ultimate like reason for doing this. And I get very emotional because I always pray that I'm, I'm, I'm half, a good, half a good mother, if that's, if that's the thing. Because I want people to know that my son's life is not a mistake. It's not a medical condition. It's not a social media influence. It's not a peer pressured bullshit. When they were two years old, I knew they were gay. I just waited for them. And then finally they came out and said, okay, I've been waiting. I'm like, okay, what, what, what do we do now? You know, what's next? Um, but even at that, when the non-binary thing came out, it hit me. I was like, wait, 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 what, what is that? What is this? Mainly because I'm a black mother of a black son. And I just, just don't want the homophobia, the hate, all of that piling to one. But, but what I forgot was as 
concerned as I was about that, I forgot that, wait, what about my child? How are they doing? If I'm so busy worried about them, I'm so busy worried I'm not holding the, the, the kite string. My kite is not flying. My child is not flying because I'm so busy worried about being afraid. Or I can say, you know what? We've got so many years that we don't know I might die today. Let's make the best of it. Like right now, today. And so that's what I'm trying to get my, my clients to, to, to feel that urgency. Like there's not enough time because there's so much negativity out there. And then for those who are not my clients, I want them to know, to ask yourself a question. Do you think anybody in their right minds, any nine-year-old, 11-year-old, seven-year-old, 27-year-old, 29-year-old will say, hmm, let me find something that I'm gonna say I am. Let me pick the most, the most attacked group of people. Yeah. Let me say I'm trans. Yeah, that's smart. Let me go into the world, risk the potential of being killed, stoned, ostracized, shunned. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. Do you really think anybody would say that? And if your answer is no, then why do you think this child, why do you think truly? Because what happens is that there's a block, but it's a conscious block. You are consciously saying, I don't want to acknowledge I don't want to believe that. And then they forget in their morality that heterosexuals produce homosexuals. So if you put all the homosexuals together in a room and burn all of us up, kill all of us, there'll be new ones being made tomorrow because heterosexuals create homosexuals. This is why they've been in the, in the earth for as long as Men and women have had carnal knowledge. This is like a thing. <laughs> so I, I, I hear that. And uh, so I was adopted at birth. Mm. And um, I've, had, I've had beautiful parents. I was very blessed with my childhood from uh, divorced to, to remarried, a, a, a tremendous amount of abundance. But my point to uh, sharing this is that myself having given birth from my own physical body to my one son I didn't want to have children then all of a sudden I said to my husband let's try this week so it became conscious we tried and boom next thing we knew nine months later we had a son wow the the consciousness of having children um for those that are not conscious of it or even being connected to it that like you say it's the gift the gift the gift and it's the gift that keeps on giving if i am willing to be in it all the time and there are so many people that are not conscious there's an unconsciousness because of programming and beliefs and fear and control of everything out there of what will they say what will they think and and I've often, uh, in my podcast and, and blog, I've um, interviewed uh, uh, non-binary, transgender, um, a variety of different conversations. I just did an interview with this lovely woman, it, the, and the title was called Being Black, mm. um, uh, Gigi Kenny, uh, last week. And so the variety, but the, it's that the consciousness of connectivity, like, don't you get me, I'm speaking to myself, June, don't you get that everybody that's crossed your path is a gift and you either get to look at the gift because actually you are the creator of it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't look at it, what are you doing for your own life? What are you letting go of? What are you missing out on the possibility of human and being together, that togetherness? And so, oh, I'm all lit up all of a sudden. That's the good. Truth. That's my energy. Yeah. My energy, honey. Thank you for putting it on me. I'm taking it on. Own it. So Own that, it. That connectivity of, of, I created it. This is a co-creation with the universe. And so if I'm not willing to look at it, then what am I doing for my own personal life? Yes. That's mm -hmm. the question. Mm -hmm. That's the million dollar question if there was such a thing. <laughs> so to answer your original question, um, I am brand new, like I said, on IG. I'm loving it. I'm still learning the ropes, but I have, like I, I was saying before, of course I got my monkey brain did what it had to do. I have grown in, since February 18, 600 followers in, about five weeks. I so, see that. 
So what I told my son was, I can only imagine if I'm doing 600, okay, 500 per month in the next year. But more importantly than the followers is the lives that will be touched. And so yesterday I wrote on my, I did my little tweet on Facebook. I said, dear coaches, your payment is not in dollars, is in lives, is in lives. And to me that, and that of course that carries on the work as a physician is in lives, is in lives, is in lives, it's the lives. <laughs> and so, Coincidentally, I do a lot of lives. I do a lot mm -hmm. of Facebook lives, Instagram lives. I am a speaker, so it's what I do. Ironically, when I was younger, you know, I say this all the time, they used to say, oh, she talks too much. She talks too much, she's always talking. But today I get paid a lot of money to talk because I, I did not lean into that, oh, she talks a lot. Imagine if I had been silenced then. That's right. Ah, I don't want to imagine it, yeah. <laughs> you know? So speech is mine. None of my boys, none of them has agreed to explore that aspect of theirs. Now my eldest, my niece, I have gotten them on my podcast once and I've gotten them to come to two of my live interviews and every single time that young human being gets on stage, everyone is like, oh my God, he is so so well, they are such a gift. Well, most people don't know that, they, but either way, they're like so touched. Oh my goodness, such a beautiful child, spoken with so much wisdom and intentionality, which is what I heard you saying. To be a parent, it's an intentional thing. You have to literally be very intentional. And one of the things they said at the last interview I had on my Black and Gay in America series was, they said, if you as a parent want to control your child or do not want to support your child, you need to reconsider your why. I was like, wow, blown out, just blown. Then the baby, the one that I think is the speaker of the lots, this is my architect, mm. the speaker of the lot, the speaker of the lots. I asked, I said, son, do you think you can love someone? Mm -mm. Do you think you can understand something if I not support it and he was like mm, yes of course and I was like what do you mean he said well I can understand Donald some of Donald Trump's policies but I'm never going to support him my child said that 16 years old and then I said okay fine therefore can you can you um therefore not understand something is that yes can you also not understand something and then support it. And he was like, yes. So that's what's happening with parents of LGBTQ kids. He said that. He said they might not understand what the child is going to, but they must support. I was like, oh my God. I was like, maybe I've done something right as a parent to, to create that kind of brain. Out There's of that brain. window. Yeah, that window of, of, um, of faith and faith over fear, knowing that there's something greater than ourselves that has the potential to bring it forward and create a better world. And it flows through us. It flows through our word. He didn't mince his words. It was just like, yes, that's what parents of LGBTQ plus kids must do. You don't have to understand it, but you must support it. I was like, come over here, come get some love. No, ma'am. All right, that's fine. <laughs> But it was found from the mouth of babes. I'm telling you, honey, I did something right. Um, Absolutely. I, I, I like to pat myself on the shoulder now and, and now and then again, too, with my son. So Ask Dr. Lulu is the Instagram page. Yes, yeah, so Ask Dr. Lulu is the IG page. Ask Dr. Lulu is also my Facebook page. Okay. Dr. Lulu is my LinkedIn. Now, I say those things, but I also say if you literally, if you Google Dr. Lulu, and if you Google the momatrician, more, more even specifically, because that's me, I own that. Like literally, if you Google, if you Google the momatrician from any part of the world, you will pull up my picture. Like I'm so unique like that. I love it. You know, if you Google right now the momatrician. You got me. 
So yeah, so I ask you to lose my IG. Please follow me on IG because that's like my my new, my brand new shiny object. And then, um, also I'm on Clubhouse, which is our, our both of our new newest objects. And I actually did what you did the other day. I, I signed out on an email. I was like, my name is Dr. Lulu and I'm done speaking. I was like, that's so cute, you know? So Clubhouse, I am Dr. Lulu, she slash her. And I didn't realize that you can only change your name once. I forgot to put slash hers. I didn't know that. So that's yeah, so she, her. But um, I, I have a room on Sundays at 6 p.m. Okay. On, 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 on Clubhouse. And it's called Positive LGBTQ Plus Parenting with Dr. Lulu. Positive LGBTQ Plus Parenting with Dr. Lulu. Because I realized that every time we're in the LGBTQ Plus space, we're thinking about pain and sadness and negativity. And so we're like, why don't we put a positive spin to it? Why don't we? Love it. Fun. So we talk about joy. And last two weeks ago, we were talking about joy. Last week, we talked about communication. Just other things that are not just so heavy because it's a heavy topic already. Those letters are very heavy. And then- So that's Sundays, Central Standard Time, 6 p.m., positive LGBTQ plus parenting. Is that the oh. name of the clubhouse room? Got it. Okay, cool. cool. With Dr. Lulu, with, with W slash Dr. Lulu. Cause you know, I'm trying to be like Tyler Perry. So I always put my name on everything that I do. I have a Facebook page called Parenting Your LGBTQ plus kids with Dr. Lulu. Who does all your marketing, sister? My me God. Myself, me, myself, and I, I haven't gotten there yet, but I will this year. This year I'm going to, I'm going to um, I'm going to diversify a bit. I hired my executive assistant, I did that. I hired my my website designer, I did that. So it's baby steps, you know, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And I'm trying to get more because I really, honestly, my my work is 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 is, is to be a speaker. The coaching and all that, that's good. But if I can write and I can speak, I'm happy. So those are the two things that I really, really, and I think my subconscious also knows that and brings me more speaking and writing opportunities than coaching opportunities. But I really want to coach too. So they're subconscious. Focus on the coaching. Thank you. Yeah, the coaching will support you in everything that you're doing, as, as I've recently experienced myself, because uh, a lot of people, even in my coaching experience, they've asked for advice or support, and I'll have to really pause and ask the questions for, to get them to make that discovery themselves. I wanted, I wanted to uh, ask one more thing, but gosh, it just went out of my mind. I was so yeah. I'm just drawn in by your vibrant energy. Mm -hmm. So with um, Clubhouse, uh, that's of course where you and I met and I have found so many wonderful connections there. The, the overall gift of what I hear you say, particularly, well, in your whole come from, for that matter, Dr. Lulu, is um, what my platform is, is making love visible. Mm. And all of the ways that you bring forth love being visible in the world. Mm. And so for me, my show being called Making Love Visible, um, my small, my subtitle is love bites, like B-Y-T-E-S, mm. because I sort of like the romantic piece to a tool. I'll just get a little love bite out of that. And, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. And so the, the zest of it has been important to me. And I saw, I saw you and your shares, and I'm so glad to, to spend this time and connect with you because it just feels valuable. And I, I want more people to, to get the gift of you and, and uh, see that you're, uh, come to Honolulu and speak. I, I think that would I be fantastic. Come. No, but you know, I, I you took it out of my mouth. I was just going to ask you next. Don't you guys have any events in Honolulu when, even before we open up, they have, there are lots of virtual events. I just, the, the, another beauty of, of Clubhouse, and I need to remember every time I, I do one of my awesome, literally mic drop moments on Clubhouse is to just end by saying, if anybody's looking for a speaker, I need to, I need to get into that more. You know, or if you're a parent, you know, yes. we, we don't want to, or maybe both, because I, I would like, I would like to do that more. So for anybody that does want to learn more about Hawaii, there's a, a clubhouse called Hawaii, uh, it's the Hawaii Club. Uh, and it's, I'll, I'll text it to you and I'll go ahead and put it in the, the tagline too. There, there's so many special things about Hawaii and one of what I'm discovering more and more is the culture of Hawaiiana and, um, living here now 39 years and the word really? aloha aloha wow. itself is oh, right, yeah. 
yeah, I'll send it to you. It's it's love and action. Like what, how am I being aloha in every single thing that I do? How am I making aloha visible? How am I walking that path? And for me, owning a destination wedding business, I do Hawaiian weddings <clears throat> and working with the local culture and um, also now coaching and having my book, The Benefit of the X subtitle, Making Love Visible When Everything Changes is what is my come from? What am I doing to be aloha? And, and so I'm attracted, like, like attracts like. And the one other piece I wanted to share with you, Dr. Lulu, is that I, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Interior Design. Really? And I did very little with it because I'm not a numbers person. I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. And so what I've said over time is that the interior design is the interior design of my own life. Mm -hmm. And how am I taking that on? And how am I, how am I touching and, and filling up the pieces? And so when you said architecture, I went, oh, she's the architect of her own life. I love this because, you know, weaving that pathway of how it looks for you. Yes, yes. yes love it. And, I, and I could tell too, your spirit, is, your spirit comes through you. I love your hair. I love your face. I love, I'm, and I'm also one of the few people that I know that in 2018, my near resolution was to compliment women more i just realized that women generally we, we either don't know how to receive it or we don't we don't ever even receive it and we just don't get given it the gift of wow i love your hair so the first thing i said was oh my god i love your face and if i haven't seen your face on on on, on Instagram, I was, oh my god i love your face and i find that just by telling and it's it's, it's been two years now and i've and two, maybe three years i haven't stopped and now I've gotten used to it. Just always when I see a woman, I don't care. I just, the first thing I do is find something good to say to them. Yes. And I just yes. keep moving and I don't even, it's, it's subconscious now. It's like riding a bike now. So anything, any habit, whether it's using the right pronouns, whether it's accepting your child, whether it's accepting yourself, <laughs> if you practice enough, you will get there. And so I really appreciate this. I don't know where I, where I was going with that, but I appreciate it. Well, I, I thank you so much because I too, a couple of years ago, uh, as I have matured mm -hmm. and my hair has become brighter and whiter and I had a lovely friend she came to visit the other day she's Tongan and she's she says June you look exactly the same I said yeah for except for my white hair and I'm like I just need a little clothespin right here for my throat and she says that's the that's where they say that women you can tell the age of a woman I said yeah but my spirit is really like around 45 Amen. I feel not not 58 but 45 exactly. I feel 30 I feel 30 I, I know I look like I'm in my mid thirties, but literally when I had my birthday a couple of weeks ago, I just said I turned 25 again for 27, for the 27th time. <laughs> I love it. And for yeah. those who, who, who doubt, the first question I ask them is that, do you know any woman that literally increases her age? If I tell you I'm 52, I'm 52 and yeah, take it or leave it. That's fine. I, you know, what's for dinner? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. And on top of that, you are gifted with pigment mm. and, oh, and, okay. and, yeah, you know, that, that, that gift is just, it's so buttery and so rich in so many ways. And I, gosh, I, you know, like I said with your IG page, I love what you do with your hair and your words and your, your body and how you move. And, and I was just drawn to you. So um, um, you and I can spend Oh, good. Books. Yes. Please share your books. Can you hold them up carefully for me? Remember when you said about your book, I said, yeah, I need to show my books. So this is the first one. It's called How to Raise Well-Rounded Children. This is book one of my how-to series. It's a Lulu's how-to series, book one. And this is book two of the how-to series, How to Teach Your Children About Racism, book two. Love it. The third book is in my, my son's bedroom. I don't want to go get it, but um, it, that's called A Teen's Life. That's about teen suicide. That's not a how-to book at all. But my next book is a how-to book. That's how to accept understand and support your LGBTQ plus child. So that's going to be book three of the Love it. The title of that is simple. It's not about you. That's it. It's not about you. Not about on the you. Other, yeah, on the other side of the coin, this book, The Benefit of the X, mm -hmm. my book, mm -hmm. it's not about the X, it's about you. So I it's like- it. so, so what made you write that? Was, that? was it like after a relationship or something? Yeah, um, I was married for almost 20 years and my former husband um, is remarried and um, I got to a point where I realized that there was nothing about my relationship that I could connect with anymore. Uh, he was a triathlete, he was a runner 
and I became interested in things that were different. And on top of all of that, after all this time together, I was all about what he wanted to do. And honestly, I had no idea who I was. And I never took the time to look. And as I, I didn't know how to begin to look and stay in relationship with him. I had, I, and so I stepped out of my relationship and rather than, rather than uh, moving into infidelity, I chose to leave my relationship and discover who I was. And it took a lot, it took, it took a lot of brevity because I was married to uh, a local boy, um, first generation Chinese. And so his mother had come from Guangzhou, China. And that, that, the, the, if you will, stigmatism of I, I, I married out of the Caucasian uh, uh, dialogue, if you will. And so um, even though I was adopted at birth, my mother, my mother married a man that was a paraplegic. He went to medical school at Yale, slipped off an icy road in a car accident. And so there was that paradigm. I was adopted by a paraplegic and his wife, who was a um, physical therapist in geriatrics. So I grew up Dr. Lulu, I grew up with a, an expansive vision of non-judgment, but I always held that space because I grew up in a very wealthy white neighborhood in Southern California in La Jolla. And so I, I, I saw judgment, I saw programming, and I fought with that inner dialogue within myself of what that would look like. And so when it came time to uh, not live in the paradigm of being pissed off because of choices that I made, I had to take ownership of what that really meant to me and not blame Ray because it wasn't Ray's fault. It was me discovering the choices about who I was being as a woman, as a single woman, as a heterosexual interested in all kinds of men um, from not good choices to wonderful choices to really who am I being for me? And, um, and raising a balanced child after, you know, a number of years of being married. And so th thanks for asking me that question. I appreciate that. I always like to share a little bit about me in this. In the, I know, in the, the, the good thing about it is that if you are the podcast host, a lot of times you don't get asked questions. Like I, I, I interviewed all the girls in the anthology, the book that we're writing, which is called The Warrior Women Project. And I, and I couldn't find anyone literally to interview me. I mean, I could have, I, I could use my sister who is the project manager, but she lives in Nigeria. She has a totally different time zone. And I was just like, I don't know who else to interview me. So, like, okay, I'll let my sister do it. But yeah, every now and again, you kind of get enveloped and get sucked into your guests. And then you just never, you know, like get to, to tell your own story, at least on your own show. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's good. I'm happy for you. I like the, I like the title of the book. As soon as I saw it, I, I knew right away because when I was getting divorced, I wrote, I wrote a whole, manuscript. I don't know where it is right now. I can't find it. My mom told me to keep it in a safe place and it's safe. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wrote for like three days. I wrote, I don't know how many pages. I couldn't stop writing. And I, and I called that manuscript. You think you know him until you file for divorce. And my mom was like, this is a bestseller. She was like, this is an instant. And I, and I, I don't know where it is. Um, and, and the truth of all of this, even in our conversation today is that if we're not willing to look at who we are being and, and as, as human beings in our lives, then what's the purpose? Mm. What's the purpose of all of this? And, and it's, 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 it's really all about love and how am I showing up to that space and what can I do to move that forward? And so when I discovered you, I thought to myself, oh no, uh, you know, this this is this is a, a, going to be a groundbreaking interview with uh, Dr. Lulu. I'm so excited to have her. And so I was so pleased when you said yes. Thank you very much. So are there any last words that you'd like to share with our listening and viewing audience today? I don't like using last words. I'm superstitious. Okay. Any more words? I think it's Extend it. Final. I always say any final words. I say, no, 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 no. Don't say final words. Any words of advice for the listeners? I say, okay, then because I, I just feel like I don't want to say words. Like they finished on her podcast and then they dropped dead. I was like, no, it's not final words. <laughs> but as far as words, words of advice, well, first of all, grab a copy of one of my books. This one is like the big, the big kahuna right now following George Floyd. And then of course they're doing the, they're in court with the guy right now. I forget his name. This is a big one. You can get any of my books on, really, if you just type in my name onto Amazon, you'll pull up my book, okay? And then, of course, it's also at Barnes and Nobles and the local libraries here, but y'all don't live here, so just go to Amazon. But if you want an 
autographed copy, then you can get it from me. So just send me a DM and ask Dr. Lulu or send June and a DM and she'll, she'll get in touch with me and we'll make it happen if you want one that's autographed and let me know what you want me to say and I'll make it happen. But I think as far as just going away words, I mean, where, where do you want to begin? I'll, I'll focus on, on I'll focus on people that want to write because I think I've, been, I've talked to parents enough because I think parents already know that you are the most important person in your child's life. And I don't care what you think you are. But let's focus on people who want to write or people who are afraid of writing because I also coach writers. If you don't tell your story yourself, someone else is going to tell it and they're not going to tell it the way you will. So if you're afraid of writing, practice with journaling. Let's just start with journaling. When you have enough journal entries, call me and I'll help you publish it as one. Number two, writing is, I don't want to say exhilarating because not just that. It literally opens up your mind to look into yourself, major introspection. And if you just, my favorite phrase is, lean, lean, my favorite phrase is lean in. If you just lean in, you will just find yourself writing stuff. Sometimes you cry and then you laugh about a memory, but just put it down and put it down and get do it quickly because no one is promised tomorrow. No one is promised tomorrow. And if you're a parent and you're trying to raise a child who just came out as gay, LGBTQ+, and, and you're concerned, you're worried, you're scared, you're guilty, you're ashamed, any of those emotions besides overjoyed, and even if you're overjoyed, Send me a DM, ask Dr. Lulu on Instagram or Dr. Uche Naomi on Facebook. Send me a DM and let's talk because quite frankly, the way you handle that immediate post coming out phase is everything, is everything. So that's what I'm going to say. So thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lulu. And what I would like to say to the audience today, for those of you that are in Texas, Dr. Lulu is in Texas. It's one, oddly enough, it's one of my most favorite states. I have found myself in Dallas a couple times a year for the last five or six years. And I am actually teaching a course through uh, Unity on Forest Lane in Dallas coming up in uh, um, April. It's the third week in April. It's called the Eye of the Storm. And so for anybody that's in Texas, look, I promise you, you're going to get a little note from me with this interview because you need to have Dr. Lulu come right on over to your neighborhood and give a talk to your community. And for anybody else that's viewing today, I'm honored to have had uh, her with me. And uh, you can find her on Instagram and Facebook and just Google Dr. Lulu. And oh. so thank you for joining us. And I want you to go out and make love visible in your life today ask yourself am I aware am I awakened and if I'm not what can I do how can I be in my action steps today and so as always this is June I am June and I ask you go make love visible today aloha everyone aloha hasta luego hasta luego mm -hmm.